Hello everybody, how are we doing? Angus is my name and this video is all about biodiversity. We're going to be talking a little bit about biodiversity, what it is, but also why we care. Why should we care about what biodiversity is? Why should we care about what biodiversity does for us? What does it do for us? What are the threats to biodiversity? And we'll be exploring a little bit of how we can help biodiversity too in all sorts of different habitats. So what is biodiversity? I like to break it down into two words, biological and diversity. And biological just means living things. It is all the living things, from the huge trees that we see around us here, down to the tiny little microscopic characters that live in the mud, that play such an important role to help these trees to live. So anything that is living is part of this word biological. And diversity, diversity just means difference. And there is such a huge variety of biological life on Earth. Such a huge variety all over Ireland. So many different types of living things. From the plants, to the animals, to the very small that we can't see, to the creatures that only come out at night. All of it is part of our biodiversity. So biodiversity, in its simple form, just means all of the different living things. In this movie, we're going to be exploring a few different habitats. Now, first of all, what is a habitat? And a habitat is where a plant or an animal lives and, importantly, its surroundings. Foxes, their homes are called dens, but you could have a fox den in the back of a garden in a big city. Or you could have a fox den buried deep underneath the trees in this woods. Or you could have a fox's den in some sand dunes. And wherever that den is will depend on the type of food that it has to eat, the kind of weather conditions it has to deal with, and all of those other factors. So a habitat is where a plant or animal lives and its surrounding environment. This habitat is Ireland's most natural state. This is a native woodland habitat. And by native, that means plants or animals that have made their own way here without the help of humans. And this habitat is full of hazel trees. It's full of holly trees. It's got some wonderful big oak trees. It has some magnificent common ash trees and a variety of other life that is adapted to live alongside all of those big dominant plants. In Ireland we have two different native species of oak and in the northwest of Ireland the native species of oak is sessile oak which is this mighty big tree here and these trees are the kings and queens of our woodlands. If conditions are right these trees will take over and spread and spread and spread. And they can live for hundreds of years, each oak tree. And they support a huge amount of life themselves. In all the little cracks and crevices of the bark, hang out lots of little insects. And waiting for them are little spiders to get their food. Plus lots of other plants will grow along the branches and limbs of these fine old oak trees. But the oak tree has a problem. It has these big, heavy seeds, which you all know, the acorns. And these acorns, when they fall on the ground in the autumn time, the oak tree doesn't want a whole load of young oak trees growing around it. So how does it get these seeds to spread around the forest? This is where biodiversity is amazing. Having lots of diverse life is a fantastic thing. The squirrels that live in this forest or the jays that live in this forest. The jay is a very colorful crow that lives in Ireland. What they do is they gather up these acorns and they bury them in various places around the forest. The jay might bury over 3,000 acorns each autumn and it'll stash them in 3,000 different little hiding places, but it won't need them all in the winter time. It'll need some and that's how it'll get its food, but the ones that it forget will grow into new oak trees. Another essential element of biodiversity is the small creatures, the little insects, the little millipedes, the centipedes which hunt them, the wood lice, the other little characters that live in amongst the leaf litter. They provide life, not just for this forest, not just for the trees, but for all of us, because they are the soil makers. They are the ones that eat up all of these leaves, these little packets of nutrition, which the trees have made 
by using the sun's energy. And they release that nutrition by turning it into soil, excellent soil, fertile soil, which allows the next generation of trees and other plants to be able to start to grow. Even big, heavy branches like this are broken down, first of all, by mushrooms. The little threads of fungus, you can see the white on this branch here, that go right through all the parts of the wood and they soften the wood, they break it down. So those wood lice and those other characters can get inside and start doing their work. Their work which is eating, eating, eating away at this, recycling this strong solid wood and turning it into some of Ireland's richest soils. Another amazing habitat in Ireland is where the ocean meets the land. Our rocky shores and our sand dunes, which you can see spread out behind us here. They're such an incredible and difficult place to live, possibly the most difficult habitat in all of Ireland to survive in. The tide washes in twice a day, it takes six hours for it to come in and six hours for it to go out. So all this area behind me is covered over with salty cold water twice a day. And then twice a day as that tide retreats, all of the creatures that live out there have to be able to survive, survive the sunshine, survive the snow in the winter, survive the constant rain that we get here, making it the toughest place in Ireland to live. Sand dunes are an amazing habitat. And the sand dunes that we have around us here, they act as protection. Protection from the ocean, protection from the storms that we get that come crashing onto these shores all year round, but in particularly the winter time. And they protect the land that's behind. Just this feeble sand and grasses and other special plants that live here. And they have to be special. They have to be extremely well adapted to this environment because they're dealing with salty water. Not many plants can live in salty water. But these grasses that are here, the marum grasses and the other specialized grasses around us, they have extremely deep roots. They have huge amounts of very thin roots and those roots spread out and they act as a net, as a barrier, and they catch the sand and they help it to build up, helping it to form sand dunes. And then once those sand dunes start to form, that builds the perfect environment for other hardy plants to come in, like our dandelions and our ragworts and our docks. And those then in turn, as they rot and they break down, they start to build up soil and start to build up more usual kind of soil and habitat and grassland that we get behind. But none of it would be possible without the very hardy grasses that are able to drink up salty water. These dunes have been busy building up all summer long and building thanks to specialized plants like this sea rocket. This sea rocket that is able to send down its long, long roots and it has to drink salty water being right on the edge of the land and the sea. But that salty water, an amazing adaptation, it pushes it out, out of its leaves. And you can see the salt, you can feel it on your finger if you rub the leaves of this plant. And by spreading out these roots in its search for water, it's helping to fix this sand here. And coupled with the ever tough marum grass, you can also see the salt in the back of this. The marum grass with its big network of roots, all of this builds up these embryonic dunes. All of these plants build up this protection for us, protecting us from the waves and from the sea. And the next storms will chew back at some of this and the next storms will take away some of this. However, next summer they will start to creep out again in their never ending battle between the land and the sea. Some of the amazing diversity that we get in our coastal habitats is all of the different seaweeds. We have huge number of seaweeds around the Irish coast of different types, of different species of seaweeds. And of course, seaweeds are some of the ancient, ancient organisms on the earth. Seaweeds are some of the very first plants that started photosynthesizing, that started pulling the carbon dioxide out of the air and separating the carbon from the oxygen helping to cool the earth and of course helping to give us our oxygen rich 
air that we have now. And not just for us humans, but for all the animals of the earth. Seaweed is amazingly adapted. Its slippiness helps to stop it rubbing and abrading. So when the waves are constantly hitting it and moving it, it doesn't wear itself away. And all of this mound that we have around us here of these big kelps, these massive strong seaweeds that can go up for many meters, gives a hint at how much life lives just beyond us here, just beyond the low tide mark. And all of these big kelp forests, of course, they're nurseries for so many fish and so many other creatures that live out there. Creatures that we rely on ourselves for food and support a myriad of other species up along the food chain. So the rocky shore is such an amazing example of biological diversity, of the amount of variety of life, even in such a tough place as this. It's low tide here at the moment, and all of these rocks are exposed, and with them are exposed so much of the specialized life, like this little limpet, this amazing tough little creature that it's built its shell just to the contours of this exact piece of rock. And it's waiting, like all the other life around here is waiting, waiting for the tide to come back in, when it'll be able to crawl and slip across the rocks here and eat up some of the algae that's growing on the rocks. The amount of life that you'll see on a rocky shore is phenomenal. There are so many different types of shellfish that are here. These little winkles, which are eating up the seaweed, but trying to stay out of the path of the ferocious whelk. And the whelk, which is trying to eat, trying to find its meal in amongst the winkles, the limpets, and the barnacles that are here. All of them waiting for that tide to cover it up once more so they can get on about their feeding. Another very different habitat in Ireland is freshwater habitat. And freshwater habitat is so abundant in this country. Some parts of the west of Ireland get over two metres of rainfall every year. And of course all of that rain, it falls on the mountains, it trickles through the bogs, it trickles down into the streams, into the tributaries, and then into our river systems. And our lakes, like the lake behind me here. And these lakes, they're natural reservoirs, natural stores for water. The majority of our drinking water in Ireland comes from lakes such as these, come from surface water. And the biodiversity that's in this fresh water is unique. It's all adapted, much as the coastal biodiversity is adapted to its little spot, much like the woodland biodiversity is adapted to its own niche. Freshwater biodiversity is adapted to be able to live with this and live with rising levels of water in the winter and receding levels in the summer. The specialist grasses that are behind me have adapted so they can be submerged all year round. And within those grasses, they provide shelter. They provide shelter for specialist birds, like coots, like water rails, like snipe, that are able to live in amongst those wet places and pick off the little bugs that live there too. We have our own influences on these. Any pollution that comes from us, any little bits of plastic that comes from us, any of the wrong things that we put into our own water systems, even at home, all end up in these ditches, these streams, tributaries, and eventually into the rivers and the sea. Biodiversity looks after us as long as we look after biodiversity. And one of the ecosystem services that biodiversity provides is filtering the water, cleaning the water, that runs down through our lands, through our fields, down beside our roads. And the water that is flowing down into the Lennon Valley in here, into the Lennon River, is filtered by all of these shrubs, trees, grasses, bushes that are around here. This is called riparian habitat. And riparian habitat is very special. It helps clean our waters, as well as provide a whole strip of biodiversity, a little nature corridor that runs up along our streams and along our rivers. Much like some of the other habitats that we have, there is a great mix, a great diversity of species here. But some of the species here are quite specific. They're quite exact to this riparian habitat. And the kind of trees that live here they're able to suck up lots of water. We get willow, we get alder, we get aspen living around these riparian habitats, living around the edges of rivers. 
And these trees, as well as drinking water, as well as filtering the water and cleaning it for us, they also help to hold the riverbank together. The roots spread out like a big network, like a big net, holding all of the mud and casting a shade and a shadow over the river, which gives a chance for fish to be able to have places to dwell, have places of refuge. In these wetland habitats, there is of course a lot of moss and a lot of different plants that like the shade that's cast by these trees. Plants like this fern, Ferns are some of the ancient plants of the planet. They are some of the very first plants to grow up in their search for light in evolutionary scales. Ferns have been with us for hundreds of millions of years and they're still here today, still a very successful plant. One very important part of biodiversity is what it does for us. It's the reason why we should care so much about biodiversity. We call it ecosystem services. In other words, what nature does for us for free. And woodlands are full of those examples. Like this big oak tree behind me. This big oak tree will supply enough oxygen every year by separating it from the carbon dioxide in the air around us for a family of four for a full year. And by doing that, it's pulling carbon dioxide out of the sky, which of course helps in our fight against climate change. And it helps to cool down the earth and clean the air for us. And also for flood control. It's another essential component of woodlands, of trees, that we don't always think about. One big mature oak tree can drink 60 or even 70 litres of water every single day. And all of that water is going up, being stored in its trunks, its branches, and then transpiring, evaporating into the air. If we got rid of that oak tree, that 60 or 70 litres of water, it would drain into the field, drain down into the road, or into our schools and towns and businesses. So biodiversity, as well as providing all of this rich, wonderful nature for us to enjoy, quite literally keeps us alive. Biological diversity, all of the different living things, importantly, including ourselves. Biodiversity not only gives us great pleasure, but it helps keep us alive. It gives us the very air we breathe, the soil that our food grows from, it helps us with flood control. It provides us with medicine. We need to protect biodiversity. And if we look after biodiversity in our local patches, in our school grounds, in our own gardens, and in our own surrounding areas, well then biodiversity will look after us.